Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and we're essentially leaving right off where we left, which is with the inventory tutorial with the per net networking system in our survival game uh, setup here. But of course, you can use this for any game you essentially want. I think one of the first things we should do is we should just set up a quick item script, which we can always use again in the future. Let's just call this item. And let's just set this up very quickly with just some uh, basic stuff. We could, for example, set it up with serialized field. That could be private string, and that could be the item name, for example. Um, we could set it up with some kind of item picture. Well, let's do that. Private, uh, this will be sprite, item picture, and stuff like that. We can do much more. And essentially, let's make some public getters for these as well, which is what we do here with these. Essentially, just means that we can get these private variables, but publicly, but without being able to change them. But that's very useful. Now, back in our inventory manager, let's add the item here. And let's also add the item here. And we probably also want to uh, mention the inventory slot that it was moved to so this would be the new slot there we go all right cool and then in here let's also just keep track of which item it is in the inventory item data okay awesome let's try and figure out how we want to communicate with these slots so one thing that we can do is in the inventory slot here when we're handling the on drop we can now also go and get the instance handler the track instance and then we can out the inventory manager which will be the inventory manager and let's of course plop this inside of an if statement since it's a try get and um, we could possibly return that around. And so if we don't get it, we'll just return. And we can also debug log out an error saying uh, fail to get inventory manager, something like that. We can mark the slot here. That's pretty basic debugging stuff. But essentially now we can get the inventory manager. The item moved. And as you can see, it's kind of trying to do the right thing. Um, except I guess what we can't do actually is we can't... We can't be expecting the item in here. What we need to be expecting is we need to be expecting the inventory item. Like so. And this is what we've already gotten up here, actually. So let's just store this. So let's say var inventory item. Let's do that. And then we can set that down here as well. Like so. And now we can feed the inventory item in here too. Cool. So now we're essentially feeding the inventory item that we're moving. Um, so now we have that data here. Now we also need to correctly add the item. This will obviously happen when you pick it up. Um, we can just quickly make a method for it. Probably void, let's call it pickup. And this will get the instance handler, the tracker instance, out inventory manager, inventory manager. And of course, this goes inside an if statement. And then if we get the inventory manager, we'll do inventory manager dot uh, add item, which will be this. And then we'll also destroy the item. Like so. So we'll destroy it from the world and pick it up at the same time. Cool, but uh, this was really not what I meant to do. I just wanted to show you how we add items. Um, and again, we can probably invert this. Might be a better idea. Uh, so let's just do that. Let's return in here. And also make sure that we debug log error. Saying that couldn't get inventory manager for item on fire item. I guess we can put out the item name. All right, cool. Uh, now that we have this, we can now add items and move items around, but we're technically not really doing anything with it. What we want this inventory data to be is essentially a way for us to keep track of the uh, of the actual visuals that's happening, right? So first of all, what we need to do is we need to keep track of all our inventory items here as well, which we should maybe do by also keeping track of the inventory item, I think. Let's try this. And this might be wrong. Again, bear in mind, I could be changing my mind later on how we do this. I think here we have an array with them moving around. So now let's figure out how we add them first. So first of all, we have this whole list of slots. And what we also need is we need the slot to know whether it's available or not. So let's make a private pool. Uh, or actually, um, let's maybe have this be a... Uh, a link to the inventory item. Let's keep track of that item and then let's make a public bool. Uh, essentially being is empty. Oh, and we can for that also make a public getter for the inventory item in case we need that. So now that we're here, let's also make a public void and we want to set the item. And this will be the inventory item to set essentially like that. This way we can do it from the inventory management itself. So whenever that we want to add an item, what we can essentially do, I think is the best way is just to move through all our slots. So let's do slot. And then let's do if slot, whoops. If slot dot is empty. And I think once again, let's inverse this and just do continue. I think that's cleaner so we don't go multiple steps in like this. 
Then we'll do slot dot set item. Uh, and this is essentially where we need to have built the try item already. So let's do var. This will be uh, item data will be new will be equals to new inventory item data like so. And here we can populate it and we can also feed that down here. Just need the inventory item data. So I guess we just need to make the inventory item. We still need to make this data though. Let's do that. So let's make the inventory item itself and we can just instantiate that from the item prefab and plop that in there and i think the inventory item itself as well needs some kind of setup method which can be public void set oh let's do just call it like init or something like that which is where we can set like the we can send through the item name and we can send through the sprite of the item picture for example and then up here we can just keep track of let's do serialized field private image uh, actually, we have the image on it already, so we can just do the same thing as we have here. So we can just do private image. This will be in the engine UI, which will be our item image. And this will obviously be a similar thing. We'll just copy this, and this will be of type image. There we go. Now we have the item image, and then we can set the item image equals to oh, dot sprite, of course, equals to the item picture. Like so. Now we can initialize it, which we can do now when we add them. So now when we have wrong place inventory manager here, now when we create it, we can now go and say inventory item dot in it and then we can send the item dot name whoops item name and the item dot item picture as well uh, and this stuff we want above the data because we want to be able to populate uh, populate the data with the stuff here so we want to feed it the item we want to feed it the new inventory item and the amount being one obviously because this is when we initially added and now we can also in the inventory item data we can now keep track of where this is stored and essentially what we want to do for that is we actually want to convert this for each into a for loop. I did that by holding alt and pressing enter. Most IDEs can do that. Some of them have it out here as well. Uh, but essentially the reason why I want to do this is because I want to keep track of the indices that we're in. So first things first, in a wake, let's set the inventory data equals to new inventory item data array for the slots dot amount that we have, or count, sorry. For the amount of slots essentially that we have in the game, we want to have just as many um, array entries as well. And what we can do now is we can take the array entry at i and we can set that equals to our new item data so that way we're now tracking exactly where it is now if we set this to be uh, serializable like so we should actually be able to see it happen now, of course we don't have an item yet but i just want to see if we can even see it probably so let's add the item or inventory manager here we'll add the prefab which is the item prefab and then we can add all the slots i guess let me just add a bunch of these so we have them all ready and set up let's just do something like that back into the inventory lock that select all of these and just drag and drop them in here uh, the reason why i also want to do it manually is because i wanted to make sure that they are in order so you can see one two three four this is essentially the order of them in the grid as well that is kind of gonna matter i guess well i guess as long as it's consistent it probably doesn't um, but I, I hope what I'm saying somewhat makes sense. Again, I can't mention it enough. I'm taking this on the fly too, so this is also new for me. <laughs> I'm just trying to follow my own logic. I'm not saying this is the best way to go about it. Um, but essentially now, uh, if we do serialize this, so let's do uh, let's make it a per read only, and then let's do serialize field. The per read only essentially just means you don't edit it in editor. This is just a part of pernet that I added to just make it easy to make read only things. So you can see now the entry is read only. Um, okay. Cool. Um, and I guess item and inventory item, we might also want to make serializable as reference. Uh, maybe not. Let's have a look first. Um, okay, either way, when we hit play now, we should see that this inventory data array should be filled up. There we go, with this many uh, entries. Uh, now that we have these, let's also, let's make a way to add an item very quickly. So I think what we gotta do is we gotta feed it an item. Uh, so let me just make like a test item real quick. Uh, so this will be, this is of course a UI item, so let's just rename that to make that very clear, it's UI item. Uh, and then let's make another prefab for an actual item in the game world. So let me go back into the environment here. Let's go make a 3D object, let's make it a cube, this will be test item. I'll just make this 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 I guess, 0 0.2 in height. I don't know, something like this, we have a little block, doesn't matter much. Um, it's not really going to do much yet, so let's add the item to the script. Just call this item name. This is just going to be test cube. We can give it whatever uh, sprite that we want. Let's do just, a, I guess, a, just a white knob, I suppose. That's all I have for now. And what I want to do is on this item script, I just want to add a context menu where we can just uh, 
uh, test pickup, for example. Do something like this. And actually, I guess we can just execute this code here. Uh, that should probably be fine. We can just always test pick it up like that. So let's quickly go and see how this works now. So let's go in here. We have the test item. I go and right click, hit test pickup. And it seemed to populate every single one. Oh, of course, because I don't return. Though in here, when we move through all of the slots, if they're not empty, we continue. But if we do end up adding it, we want to return. Um, or we can also just break, I suppose. But same thing, we get outside of the for loop. Uh, so now it should only add it to the very first one. So let's try this. Let's try and hit play. Let's go to the test item, right click, test pick up, and boom, now you can see we have this item in here. Um, and I guess, oh, I guess it is red still the knob because we never, because the color of the UI component now is set to being red here. Let's just set that back to all white. So now it should, you know, be the color of whatever we put in there. So we can go again, boom, here, test pick up, and there we go, now we have it in here, and we can drag and drop it around. Cool, so we have a little bit of an of an item system set up already. Um, now let's try and make it so that we can also um, stack items, right? So I guess first thing we want to do is we want to just quickly separate this code. So add new item, I'll call it here behind the scenes. And this item will go in here and we'll essentially throw that code in here. So now we'll only want to add new item if there is no uh, existing item. So we can make a private bool, try stack item and we'll give it the item uh, and essentially we'll do if we cannot stack the item then we will add the new item so i hope this little piece of code makes sense it's essentially just a little private pool that we have here and what we want to try and do now is we want to try and search through every single one of our existing inventory data and if any of those align with our item here well then we can stack it um, and i guess this also means we should probably on the slot uh, well, I guess we can have it either on the slot or on the inventory item. I guess it doesn't really matter where we have the the number um, of entries. I guess we can do it on the inventory item. So when we init it, we can also have an int for amount. And then we can add some, uh, I guess, some amount. Let me just serialize that field. I think it's cleaner. So let me do private tmp underscore pro. So we can use text mesh pro underscore text. Sorry, tmp underscore text. And this will be the amount text like so. And we'll take the amount text dot text equals to the amount dot to string. There we go. I'll just quickly go and do this as well. Um, so let me go back to the 2D view, back to the grid. And I guess technically, let's just add a UI item here. So add UI item. And then to that, I will just add a UI uh, text mesh pro, which will ask me to import TMP essentials, which of course we will do. And then I will just add that to the bottom right. So let's just have this stick to the bottom right down here. Let's make it thick and let's just write 23 as a test. I'll make it thick, I'll make it black. Something like that's fine. Because now you should stick to the bottom left how many we have. All right, so now that's on the item. I can go and I can reference the, oh, so of course we need to fix the scripting errors. Just because right now the try stack item uh, doesn't do anything, we need to fill that out. And also when we init it, we need to feed it the amount. So here it'll just be one because it's you know adding the new item. There's no amount yet. Um, and that should fix that. Should be able to feed it the reference now, like so. And I can now store this, and I can delete it. And now you should also see if we go and test it, um, you should also see now that we should get a little one in the bottom right corner, test pick up, and I can see we have one down here. And you can see it follows when we drag it around. Cool. Um, and I think that's probably enough for now. I guess let's uh, handle the stagging and the actual moving of the item and the data uh, in the next one. So hopefully it makes sense so far. I know it's a little bit tricky. We still haven't even gotten into networking the actual inventory system just yet. But for now, I just want a solid foundation of an inventory system that we make ourselves. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Please do leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Remember to join the Discord. Link will be in the description and the top of the comments. And other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.